Okay, so on this, one of the things we know is if we follow the skin and follow all the way down and keep, you want to keep your knife against the actual bone. If you feel like you're cutting all the way through meat, chances are you probably are. So you just want to stay nice and close to the actual bone. And when you get back here to those oysters, just like on the chicken, they have those little muscles right back there. And following that skin down, follow it like this. I'm trying to do this backwards for you so you can see all the way down to the tail. Not a lot of meat back here, you can see. I'm just doing that to illustrate that there's no more meat left in that area. Now, if I follow every bone, it should lead, if I can get a nice clean picture of it for you, should lead right to a joint right there. Right down in there is the thigh. You can see that moving around there. If you just bring your boning knife right into that, and dejoint it. On a chicken, we can just lift that. Depending on what size pound bird you have or what kind of poultry you're working with, you can go in and carve around that joint. Get all the meat out. I said it's a little more difficult doing this backwards where I can't see. There we go. I'm just coming down that leg joint just a little bit because we're going to debone this anyhow. So that can come out. So that's ready. Just lift and pop that right out. On larger birds, you have to cut a little bit. Then I come back here. Now this is the shoulder bone. I want to do two things. One, come in on that side, and two, come right down. Just because I want to leave the meat there, and I want to have as much meat and not bone. So I can even take that bone out and actually use that in my stock. I can just set that aside, set it in the cavity, wherever for right now. Because it's all going to be used for stock. Take the meat. Come down. And as I come down, I'll still reverse this and try to do this backwards for you. Follow this, just like so. This brings me into the actual rib cage. Right here is the rib cage. Follow this bone down. If I follow this bone down and back, brings me right to this joint right here, which it should just be able to now go in. And then it cuts straight back on that. That relieves that bone. Come in here just like we did on all of the chickens. It's just a little bit larger working surface. Now, here's the second place you can mess this up. If you go just a little bit too far and bring that around. Right here is the keel bone. You'll start seeing a white line. The white line right through here, you want to be careful about because that's the skin. If you go through the skin, when you stuff it, then it punctures it. Notice how I brought that. As soon as I hit that white line, I turned my knife and brought it back in here. So I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. That's just like so. Keeping the knife up against the bone. Can we just eat it like this, Chef? What's that? Can we just eat it like this? It looks really good. Actually, you could. I mean, not raw. I'd want to cook it. So, as I go around, I keep opening this up and keep rolling it out. As soon as that's open, all you want to do is stay right close to the bone. See that? As soon as I follow the bone, follows it in, come around, come up here. When I follow that, right into that oyster or that bone that, or that meat that's on the backbone, I want to get that out. I can take and just pop this. 
Get up into the actual joint there, pull that out. And now this is ready to go back into stock. Carol? Yeah. Can you grab this for stock? Now, same thing on the chicken. Most poultry has lines and it'll tell you where to actually cut. And so here, with this white line here, I'm just gonna go in just like you did with the chickens, cut down, cut around, back and forth. And remember, this is a two-legged animal. On a two-legged animal, those kneecaps are gonna be big. So you're going to have to go a little bit wide on there. The other thing is the tendons on a turkey, like on the drumstick, are going to be larger than a chicken. Not for obvious reasons, but since they are carrying so much more weight, those tendons are going to be tougher and a little stringier. If you want to take the time and you feel like you're making good time on your turkey, and then you have the time to work with it a little bit longer, then you can actually debone. I guess it's not really deboned, but detendon all the meat around the drumstick. And I'll show you what I mean by that. But if you're like, you know what, it's taking me a little bit longer time. I don't want to keep it in a danger zone. I still need to stuff it. I still need to truss it. Maybe it's best that I just let the tendons be and I can pull them out after the cooking process. And again, that's up to you. That's up to your capabilities and skill level. So right here, all I'm doing is cutting down, making sure I've relieved the tendons from that actual bone. Post it back like that. Take this, just like we did with the chicken wing. I'm gonna cut around it, and what you'll find is that inside area where those two lumps are right there where we were Frenching the chicken bones, that's where those tendons come in. So I'm gonna just take this, Grab the bone, make sure there's no meat, and twist. And as I twist, see like right there's what I'm talking about, where there's a tendon and yet there's some meat. And I'll show you what you can do with that. Especially on your really, really large turkeys, there's some larger bones. So there, that's what it looks like. Take my paper towel off it. This is ready for the actual stew, or not stew, the stock. Okay? Now on this piece, what I meant is all you have to do is take your knife, cut it out. If you really want to mess with somebody and put the dark meat inside the white meat, like that, they'd be cutting the white meat and all of a sudden go, <gasps> mutant turkey, oh my gosh. But I think they already know that something's up, especially when your parents come in or someone comes in and sees your turkey laid out like this they might look at you like what did you do to our Thanksgiving turkey okay now there's another bone right up here this is the little drumette right here you can see the drumette and all I'm gonna do is come down here actually pull that out cut the meat around it like so, come down this way like so, and again this is just for aesthetics and also ease. That way at the end of Thanksgiving there's like, you don't have to like take this turkey that's been sitting out. I'm going to get right down to that cartilage, pop that bone out, just like so. That goes in your stock, now I take that invert it back, I take this die, and you go, oh my gosh, what did I do? But then you just go like this, like a button, belly button, right? <laughs> oh, 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 there it is. Okay, just like so. On this side, the thing you'll see is I constantly dry my hand, dry my knife. 
go in here, carve around that little wing joint, that drumette. And again, you don't have to do this one. This is extra. Obviously, I'm not going to go all the way down the wing, um, pull out the double bones. You could, but there's a point in time where you go, you know what? We're going to just leave a little bit there. It's totally up to you what you want to do. So I get the meat stripped away from that. Just take that again. Lift, pull. Pop it out of the cartilage, like so. And then come up to the thigh bone, come around the thigh bone. <laughs> Just like so. And remember, go a little bit wide. If you don't, in fact, I won't on this one. I'll cut right through it. I'll cut right through the actual um, kneecap, so that way you can see how to fix it. I'd much rather you like see how to screw it up and how to fix it than to panic and go, uh oh, did I just screw up all the Thanksgiving dinner? He didn't. So don't call me. I have an influx of calls during this time, especially on Wednesdays. <coughs> but chef. Okay, go around. Again, I'm working those tendons off the actual bone, that cartilage. Come down and around, down and around. Remember this one, I intentionally left the kneecap on. I intentionally screwed it up. Come around here, cut through those tendons. The other thing I'm doing is opening up a hole big enough to pull that joint through. Pull down some of that meat so it's free from the bone. Notice I switch to the back of my knife so that way it doesn't screw up the actual blade of my knife. Tuck that in, grab it, got one tendon left right there, I missed, just cut it, twist it, just like so. You still have a little bit of meat there, like I said. Take that off, take the time, take that off, put it back where it belongs. Thank you, sir. Just set that right over there. Same thing. I have an Audi. And then what I'm doing is just pushing that through, just like so. And at this point, you go, it really looks like it's been run over now. Now, remember I said I was going to leave that in there and screw up? Right there 